In today's video, we're going to be taking a big old look at the winner of 2023 to 2024. That's almost hard to say. It's so unbelievable. This might be the fifth year fourth or fifth year that we've been doing direct weather which is just so crazy to think about um it has been a long long time that this has been a part of my life and i guess a lot of your lives as well i'm so thankful for that we're going to be talking about the potential temperatures and precipitation due to this el nino that we see on screen we have a strong el nino that we anticipate this year and that's going to dictate a lot of the hurricane season the winter, the spring afterwards, we're going to just see a multitude of different impacts. But I want to tell you guys a little bit about my business, Trilogy Maps. All of the maps you're going to see today are used uh, with those Trilogy Maps. They're the most customizable, highest definition, 16K maps. I mean, think about that, 16K. That's unbelievable. And right now, we do have a 50% off deal going on on the entire store. And you can even use our discount code DIRECT for 33% more off on your order, so it's an absolutely killer deal. You're gonna to wanna to check that out today for these amazing, amazing maps. Now, let's get into things, and we're taking a look at this El Nino, like I said. And an El Nino is just warmer waters here along uh, the equator here, offshore of South America right there. And mostly, uh, we're taking a look at two different regions, kind of the eastern-based and the western-based portions of this El Nino. This changes everything okay if you see an eastern based el nino you expect different conditions than if you see a western based one and right now it's a question mark so i'm going to urge you to stay tuned with us as we talk about this through the year we'll get a better idea of what to expect as far as a west based or east based and how intense that el nino could be because that is all going to be a big time player in the upcoming weather pattern now in a typical el nino this is the conditions you can expect during a during an El Nino, usually warmer and drier here across a lot of the Northwest, North Central, and even Ohio Valley here in the United States because we're not really getting a Northern storm track coming through like we see oftentimes in a La Nina, which is the opposite. Uh, in an El Nino, most of this is coming through the Southwest, as you can see, and then potentially up the East Coast. So something that we're going to want to really pay attention to is the influx of southern sliders coming through. A lot of times the southeast sees snowier winters in El Ninos than La Ninas because of these southern sliders that are very common. Not only that, nor'easters. We're going to need to watch for big time storms moving up the east coast here during El Ninos. El Ninos overall are better for the east coast and southeast as far as seeing snowfall. Inland areas like the Ohio Valley, like I mentioned, the north central United States, they usually have slower, less snowy winters in El Ninos, as well as the northwest. Now, let's talk about what I expect this upcoming winter. Uh, overall, we're going to just take a look first off at the temperature pattern here, and we expect warmer conditions out west. Okay, Overall, especially in the northwest here, things are going to look drier uh, and overall warmer. Now, as we move on and take a look at our second layer here, um, we're going to see an area of even warmer temperatures along the West Coast. And honestly, I've made this map quite a while ago, and we've already showed them before. But I think that mostly this Northwest area uh, is particularly where I would personally be watching for the warmest of the temperatures, especially with less storms there. That probably means more sun which probably means more warmth. So there's multiple different reasons to believe that these areas will be particularly warmer this upcoming winter of 2023 to 2024. Now, you probably are already guessing where most of the colder air would be, and that's gonna be in the eastern two thirds of the nation. So let's get that on screen here. And this is gonna be hit or miss. I, I think that a lot of times we could see some warmer air moving northward and really warming things up, which has been more common the last 10 years than ever uh, in recorded history, at least. Now, we can see oftentimes a, a colder air mass move in. Even last winter was an insanely warm winter, but we saw during Christmas time, frigid air move in. So I, I think that at times we're going to see this type of a pattern. And this is particularly where we'd be watching for a storm moving through like this to potentially bring some southeast slider type snowfall. Or, like I mentioned earlier, a nor'easter uh, doing something like this, 
where we'd be watching the entire eastern seaboard for snowfall. This type of winter, an El Nino winter, is exactly when we'd be watching for those types of storm tracks, particularly as the most impactful type. Now, the temperature pattern, we have one more frame to show you guys here, and this is especially where we expect the colder temperatures to lie. And that would be mostly for these areas in the upper Midwest, Ohio Valley, uh, and portions of the inland Northeast. So this is mostly going to be for those times where we have a big ridge here and a trough that's more like this, where there is some Southeast Ridge uh, and, and all the way up the East Coast warming things up. It's more likely for these areas to be colder more often inland like that. So especially again, over the last multiple couple of winters, that has been a very, very common site. If, if you live anywhere in the United States, you've probably noticed that. So uh, we have been dealing with that quite a bit in recent history. Now, as we take a look at this precipitation outlook here, not really an outlook, it's more of just like an informational thing as far as what El Ninos could bring. Again, nothing really outside of the El Nino can be predicted, so we're just showing El Nino-based maps here. Uh, this is not a forecast, not an outlook, and you're probably going to see a lot of comments below. This is way too early to be making a winter forecast. Well, lucky for you, it's not a forecast. And the, those types of people are not watching this far into the video, so every, everybody be sure to uh, go let them know if you see those comments uh, that, that they're completely wrong, uh, <laughs> that this is not a forecast at all. Uh, there is going to be some of those comments, most likely. Now, as you can see, the storm track in an El Nino is going to look a lot like this. Um, sometimes, you know, you see more of a southern slider type storm. Uh, you might see those coming in from this type of an angle. Everywhere north of the storm track will be the more likely area to see snowfall. And again, all of these types of storms are just so much more likely in an El Nino winter like we're seeing. I think my favorite thing about the fact that we're seeing an El Nino is that California here is again likely to see an above average precipitation winter. And luckily during our La Nina we had last year, which again is the opposite of an El Nino, they saw a lot of precipitation last year as well. And we're anticipating the same thing this year. Usually a La Nina you see less of that type of activity, but they saw it anyway. And if they can get back to back above average precipitation uh winters I, th I think that'd be an excellent thing for the drought conditions there if you do live in the west coast let us know how that drought has been uh, have, has there been improvements recently because we have had some above average precipitation uh, and much less dryness for these areas it's very very exciting and makes me very happy now as we move on we can see again more good news here uh, we expect particularly above average precipitation to be here for this southwest area as usually in a la nina we see the storm track do this, go on shore of the northwest, and basically nothing goes into the southwest. In an El Nino, like we're seeing though, we see a lot of the storms move through like this, and they don't go up to the northwest, so we don't see any up there, and all of it moves into the southwest like this. That is why we expect so much above average precipitation, and that is one of the most common features in an El Nino there, that west coast storm impact being either north or southwest. That is the most highest confidence feature of an El Nino or La Nina, and the most prevalent difference, I would say. We do expect below average precipitation for some of the nation, obviously, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but for our northwest area, there's going to be way less storms moving in, so we're going to put a big X there. That storm track is not going to be likely, and therefore, um, we're not going to see a lot of these types of storms either, so that is also going to be less likely. So we're going to see them moving south like this instead. That is going to be exactly what we're seeing uh, most of the time. Now, there will be storms that move through. It is a three-month period, so we're not going to see zero precipitation over three months. But it's just going to be less and more storms, like you can see on screen. We do also have some particularly below-average precipitation areas to show you guys. And that is going to be especially here in the south or northwest and then also the upper Midwest and Great Lakes there. Because basically with this northwest valve shutoff, we can expect this kind of upper Midwest cutter type storm to also be cut off. Uh, that is really, really, uh, 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 this is classic El Nino stuff here that we're taking a look at for the winter time. And overall, it would put us at something like what I'm showing on screen in just a moment here. These maps are so HD again from Trilogy Maps that they do take a second to load because uh, they're just so high definition. So more dry for the Northwest there, more storms for the Southwest, 
colder overall for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, but much drier, like we mentioned. And then nor'easters and southern sliders is what the biggest feature will be for the East Coast and Southeast. That would be what we are watching for. So if you want to stay up to date with the latest here, we're going to be making these about once a month until we start making the winter forecasts around summertime. Uh, so probably July timeframe, August timeframe is when we will start talking about that more. Uh, be sure to subscribe because we're going to be making frequent updates about all of this. Also, again, the Trilogy maps in the description and pinned comment down below where you guys can check those out today with that 50% off plus 33% off. Check that out today. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one like this one. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.